Um, Hanizha says, is it okay for my mother to go to Hajj alone? <coughs> we are from the Philippines and it is her first time, inshallah, to perform Hajj this year. She will be accompanied by a sheikh and together with friends. Now, the issue of performing Hajj without a male mahram. There are differences of opinion among scholars. The vast majority prohibit this. But let us not look into the different opinions of scholars. Let us go back to the Quran, to the Sunnah. An authentic hadith. The Prophet said, والسلام, it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment to travel without a male mahram. A statement so beautifully put by our Prophet Now, the Prophet said to travel. Maybe Hajj is included, maybe it's not. Any type of travel is prohibited without a male mahram. This is what the Prophet said Okay, then let us look at what happened after the Prophet said this. A man stood up among the companions after hearing this instruction from the Prophet ﷺ, the prohibition of a woman traveling without a male mahram. So he said, oh Prophet of Allah, my, no my name was selected to go on an expedition for jihad. I'm going to fight in the cause of Allah with army so and so. But my wife went for Hajj. So the guy is in a dilemma. The Prophet والسلام, said to him, go and catch with your wife. Catch up with your wife. Which the scholars looked at the hadith and said, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this. The Prophet did not ask him, والسلام, is your wife young or old? The Prophet did not ask him to explain whether she was beautiful or ugly. The Prophet ﷺ did not ask him whether she was alone or with a trustworthy companionship like a sheikh or other friends and women. The Prophet did not inquire, which means that the ruling is for all. Go and catch up with your wife because if it was permissible to go alone or with trustworthy companion, the Prophet would not have ordered him to leave jihad and go and accompany his wife. So when you hear and read and learn this hadith and you learn of difference of opinions of other scholars, you say to them with all due respect, this is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. They said, yeah, yeah, but uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, sent the mothers of the believers, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, to perform Hajj. So, every wo woman had her mahram with her. Where does it say in the hadith that they were, did not have mahrams? Not only that, Sauda bin Zum'a, may Allah be pleased with her. She was among the mothers of the believers that would never have traveled out of Medina, period. They would say, okay, there's another hadith where the Prophet told us that there will come a time when a woman travels from Aden to, uh, in Hadramut or to Sana'a in Yemen, etc. alone. Okay, the Prophet is telling us about something that would happen in the future. Not that he's approving of it. Imagine that the Prophet, when he tells us about the, the coming of the Dajjal, is he approving of it and saying that this is a good thing? Or rather, he's telling us about a prediction of something that Allah told him that would happen in the future. So, when you come with this clear evidence from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and you find that there are different opinions of scholars, you raise your hat to all the scholars and say, with all due respect, I only follow the Quran and the Sunnah, especially if the Sunnah is crystal clear. How dare I? follow Tom, Dick, or Harry, when the hadith is crystal clear, I appreciate their ishtihad. I appreciate what they had said. But the majority, majority follow the hadith of scholars. And the hadith is crystal clear. 
So I, th I believe that this is not permissible for your mother to go.